from running around lost with no limbs to becoming the face of a criminal organization, Buggy has grown into one of the greatest powers in the eyes of the world government. Unlike many of the other East Blue villains who met their downfall, Buggy managed to redeem himself as one of the key players in the new world. No longer a forgotten character with no purpose other than comic relief, Buggy's growth and success can be attributed to not only his immense amount of luck, but also his hidden genius. Get ready for a deep dive on the transformation of Buggy. Having gone from a bumbling idiot with no limbs to one of the four emperors, Buggy has truly come a long way, more so than nearly any other character. But before amassing a bounty over 3 billion and becoming one of my personal favorites, he was a self-centered failure that would execute his own crew members if he had even thought they said something about his nose. Like he really just blasted this guy point blank with a cannon because he misheard what he said. Luckily, he let it slide in the anime. It gave him just a verbal warning, but in the manga, yeah, that guy let's just say he's probably getting to know Ace pretty well. So yeah, if you've only seen the anime and didn't know how much of a menace Bucky actually was, let me know down in the comments, and let's talk about why he was in the East Blue fighting over a map of the Grand Line even though he's already been there. Just like Shanks, Buggy was once an apprentice of the Roger Pirates. He was loyal, a valued member of the crew, and he had been since his youth. However, his greed turned him into a selfish crewmate, leading him into a spiral of bitterness. Not only had Buggy kept a treasure map all to himself, hoping to pursue his dream of finding all the riches on the ocean floor, he also planned on selling a devil fruit the crew found together for his own personal gain. After both his plans fell apart, his greed only got worse. So much worse that even after meeting Luffy, years later he said, and I quote, I swallowed a hundred million berries, now I can't swim. So I changed my plans. If I can't get treasure that's in the seas, I'll just take all the treasure on the sea. Being a pirate, it's only natural to want to find treasure and become rich, but for Buggy, it became an obsession. He couldn't recognize that his own greed caused him to eat the devil fruit and not Shanks. A defining moment that set Buggy on the path of failure, fueling his resentment towards Shanks who blamed him for losing the 100 million berries he could have got from selling the devil fruit. Fast forward to after Roger's execution, the crew all went their separate ways, with Buggy leaving to pursue his new dream of having all the treasure on the sea, presumably starting with each of the blues to where he would wind up losing to Luffy in the East Blue. Once losing his limbs and being shot into the sky like Team Rocket, Buggy returned to Logtown to only once again be humiliated and disappear almost entirely from the story. Since now you know how Buggy went from a crew member of the Pirate King to scrapping over a map in the East Blue, it's time to get into how he worked his magic to become a warlord. Also, be sure to drop a like so he doesn't think you're talking about his nose because just like how big his nose grew, it's time to talk about how he grew as a character. Buggy would reappear at Impel Down, and while he still carried much of his unlikable traits, like being selfish and a coward, there was a big difference in what he was as a character. Instead of being a shallow villain that used his own crew as shields, he grew into what he always should have been from the start, a showman. Flashly doing whatever he does, Buggy doesn't waste his time training to become stronger. Instead, he focuses on recruiting powerful members to his crew. During Impel Down, Buggy was so caught up with being the star that when his ego was stroked by his new followers, he rolled with whatever lie they were under the impression of. Once they heard he was part of Roger's crew, they saw him as a god and they were willing to go with him to the ends of the earth. While it technically was true, Buggy wasn't the powerful pirate they thought he was. And since he was only an apprentice and the weakest member of Roger's crew, Buggy still leaned into it. He knew he was not strong enough to make it out of Marineford all by himself, and as a character, Buggy was designed to be exactly this, not a menace and neither strong, but the center of attention, ensuring that he gathers strong people around him so that when it comes time to fight, they will fight for him. And Buggy is fully aware of this. He will tell his followers anything to get them hyped so that they believe him. After losing his position as a warlord, he gave them one of the most powerful speeches in One Piece and pretended like he would fight with them, but he actually planned on sneaking away all by himself himself while they were doing the fighting. Despite still being a selfish coward, Buggy is actually incredibly smart. He knows when and where he shouldn't pick a fight because he knows his true strength lies in being a showman. With smooth talking, along with a little bit of luck, this act carried him all the way to becoming an emperor. Buggy becoming an emperor is quite shocking considering he's nowhere near as strong as the other emperors, but it makes perfect sense when you consider he's just a figurehead, which is exactly all he is. The only reason he was named an emperor was because his followers put him front and center as the leader of Cross Guild on flyers that they would send out to the whole entire world. And because the government got hold of these flyers, they named Buggy an emperor. Of course, Crocodile and Mihawk were not happy about this as they were the real power of Cross Guild, but they decided to use Buggy instead so that they could avoid 
Navy attention. Even though it may seem underwhelming, Buggy didn't have Saitama level training to become the strongest character in One Piece, it actually works a little better having him at the center of attention scared for his life. But that would be cool though if he was bald, what do you think? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, leave a like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments. If you haven't already, check out my last video on why One Piece needs more filler. Until next time, I will catch you in the next video.